So in this video, I want to demonstrate how does one graph a rational function, a general rational function here. There's a couple steps you would want to go through, and you don't necessarily have to go through it in this step, in this process right here, but this does summarize all the things we want, we want here to graph a rational function. The first thing I would consider is the domain of the function. The domain is what makes the denominator go to zero. So the denominator, which is a polynomial, you set it equal to zero, you solve that, and any number that makes the denominator go to zero, we throw out of the we throw that out of the domain okay and so the things that make the denominator go to zero we'll come back to that in just a second like i said you don't have to go in this order um so once you determine the domain these are things these are points to avoid on the graph um it's also important to find out the intercepts of the graph uh the first the the, the y-intercept is usually pretty easy the y-intercept just comes about by plugging in x equals zero into the function assuming zero did not make the denominator go to zero uh, this you'll have a y-intercept and then that's a point you would plot on the graph. Um, I'd also want to find the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts um, are going to be places that make the denominator or the numerator, excuse me, go to zero in this case. Now another thing I want to mention before we go on here is once you figure out the domain, what makes the denominator go to zero, after that, after you determine that, then I would want you to simplify the fraction. Uh, that is, put it into lowest terms only after you determine the denominator. That's, that's why step one needs to be first on this thing. Put this thing into lowest terms when you found out the denominator. Okay, uh, because x-intercepts will only be those points uh, for after you put it into lowest terms, right? Uh, so we need to figure out what makes the numerator go to zero in that situation. Uh, if you want to, you can test for symmetry. Uh, this is often listed in college algebra textbooks. Um, it can be useful, but it's not like super amazing. Um, so you can check to see whether the function's odd or even. Because if your graph has symmetry, you basically just have to graph the right-hand side uh, with respect to the y-axis. And then by reflection or rotation, then you can get the other side as well. Uh, but like I said, it's not a super helpful thing. Um, you'll find out this information anyways. Uh, we do want to graph the vertical asymptotes. The vertical asymptotes will be those points uh, which make the denominator go to zero when you're in lowest terms. So we need to find out the, we need to figure out the vertical asymptotes of the graph. Now we do need to know about the multiplicities of these asymptotes. I'm kind of jumping ahead to step six right here. Uh, we do need to determine the multiplicities of the x-intercepts and the vertical asymptotes because uh, even means you'll touch the x-axis or cross or, or touch infinity. Odd multiplicities means you'll cross the x-axis or cross infinity. Depends whether you're looking at x-intercepts or vertical asymptotes there. Now, of course, if there was a point that um, in the unsimplified form, right, that made the top go to zero and zero at the same time, like if you get the zero over zero, you have to kind of simplify this thing out. Right, and, and that's this can really lead to some remove points, something we might talk about in a future example, a little bit more detail here. But in simplified form, if something makes the denominator go to zero, it was a vertical asymptote. If it makes the numerator go to zero, it was an x-intercept. Uh, we also care about the end behavior of the graph. This might lead to things like horizontal asymptotes, which occur when the graph is bottom heavy or if it's balanced. Um, you can also get an oblique asymptote uh, when the top is one degree higher than the bottom you get an oblique asymptote. But even if it's top heavy, your graph will asymptotically approach a polynomial. So knowing that asymptotic polynomial could be of use. Uh, so once you know the intercepts, the asymptotes, and their multiplicities, then I would start plotting these things. And I don't mean like a mad scientist we're plotting domination of the world or anything like that. I mean, we're gonna put the points on the graph, the intercepts, the asymptotes, and then connect the dots uh, once we have that information there. So let's look at an example here. Let's graph the function r of x equals x minus one over x squared minus four. To find the denominator, or to find the domain, we're gonna factor the denominator. It's a difference of squares, so we get x minus two and x plus two, um, which if you set if you set the denominator equal to zero by the zero product property, we see that the domain will be everything except for two and negative two. So those will be outside the domain of the function. Um, let's look for some intercepts. The y-intercept is when you plug in x equals zero, so you get negative one over negative four, which gives you one fourth. Um, if you want to figure out the x-intercepts, you have to set the numerator equal to zero, in which case you're gonna get x equals one in that situation. And so this is information that then I would start plotting, right? So we would plug in the point, the y-intercept right here, uh, y equals one fourth. We plug in the x-intercept of one. Those are things to consider there, all right? Uh, the next step in our list was test for symmetry. Like I said, this isn't gonna be crazy helpful, but if you wanna test for symmetry, 
you're going to take r of negative x. You replace each of the x's with a negative sign. In the numerator, you're going to get negative x minus 1, right? And the denominator, you're going to get negative x squared, which actually becomes a positive x squared there, x squared minus 4. So the denominator, the negative sign disappeared, but the numerator, it didn't disappear. So um, not all the negative signs disappeared, so it's not going to become r of x. It's not even, but you also can't just factor a negative sign out the whole thing. There's no symmetry here. Like I said, I'm not going to play a lot of significance on that. Um, coming over to the vertical asymptotes, the vertical asymptotes, uh, this, this function right here is in lowest terms. There is no common factors on top and bottom. So the things that make the denominator go to zero are going to be two and negative two, uh, for which then we get vertical asymptotes at two and negative two. Notice that in this example, that the x-intercept, x minus one showed up once. So that's an odd multiplicity. And for each of the vertical asymptotes, those are odd multiplicities as well. So everything in this thing has a multiplicity of one. Um, in terms of horizontal asymptotes, you'll notice that this function is bottom heavy. The denominator is quadratic. The numerator is linear. So as x approaches positive or negative infinity, we see that y will approach zero. You're going to have a horizontal asymptote. Now, do we approach it from above or below? That's a little bit trickier question. Uh, in which case, then just imagine what's going to happen here as x gets big, 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 right? As x approaches infinity here, as x approaches infinity, you're going to get something, y is going to be approaching something like infinity minus 1 over infinity squared minus 4. All of this other stuff is peanuts compared to infinity here. This thing is going to look like basically 1 over infinity when you're done, which is 0. That's a positive 0. So we're going to approach 0 from above. But as x approaches negative infinity, things are a little bit different here. You're going to get y is now approaching negative infinity minus 1 over negative infinity squared minus four. Again, this stuff is peanuts compared to infinity, but this is now gonna look like, notice negative infinity squared is actually gonna be a positive. So the denominator is still gonna be positive, but the numerator now is actually gonna be negative, negative infinity. This is gonna look like negative one over infinity, which actually looks like zero from below. And so we're gonna see that as we graph this thing. Although this, this analysis I just did a moment ago is not something you actually need to do. Uh, it's sufficient for us to know that we're going to approach the horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. So if I plug this information into uh, my graph, I see the following. So as x approaches infinity, we see that it, we're going to approach the, the x-axis from above. As we approach negative infinity, we'll approach the x-axis from below. That part we, infer, we inferred just a moment ago. What happens near the x, uh, the x intercept of one? Well, when you're close to the x intercept of one, our function will basically look like the following. R of x, R of x will be approximately equal to when x is approximately equal to one. Basically, you're gonna plug one into everywhere in the function except for that one factor that made it go to zero. So you're gonna get x minus one on top. On below, you're gonna get one squared minus, uh, minus four. So this is gonna look like x minus one over negative three. So this looks like negative one third x minus one. So this is gonna look essentially like a line with a negative one third slope. So it's gonna be very shallow um, and it, it's gonna be it's kind of negative slope. So it's gonna look something like that. That's where this picture comes from right here. Um, when x is close to two, we're gonna plug in two everywhere in the function except for that one part that makes it go to zero. So this is gonna look like r of x r of x is going to look like 2 minus 1 over x minus 2. We don't plug in, we don't plug in there because we get a 0. We're going to get 2 plus 2. And so that simplifies to be 1 over 4 times x minus 2. So this is going to look like a, a reciprocal function with a, with a slope of 1 fourth, basically. So as x approaches infinite, or as x approaches 2 from the right, it's going to come up. And as x approaches 2 from the left, it's going to point down because that's what these reciprocal functions look like. Uh, and so we get that behavior right there, okay? Um, and then if we did this process again, erasing that, if we did this process again as x is close to negative 2 in this situation, r of x will be approximately the same thing as negative two minus one over negative two minus two. And then I'm gonna leave the X alone on the next part because that would make it go to zero, the denominator there. So you get negative three over negative four times X plus two. 
So that becomes three over four times x plus two. So this will look like a standard, uh, a standard reciprocal function. So again, of odd degree. So it's gonna go up on the right, it's gonna go down on the left. So that's where all the information came from right there. But I wanna demonstrate for you that this analysis about, oh, am I approaching, uh, am I going up or down, left or right, that type of stuff is really actually not necessary when you do this. Um, but before we do that, let me just kind of connect the dots we have right here. If we connect all of this information together, if we connect all of this together, uh, we get the picture that we see right here, the final product. Um, so graphing this thing, we have all this redundant information that comes together and, and computes this for us. I want to try this problem one more time and look at the information we have. So I'm going to graph the my x-axis right there. Whoops my x-axis and y-axis. And so I'm proving to this to you that I'm gonna do this without any technology whatsoever. And so what did we notice here? What do we know about the graph? So we had an x-intercept at one, right? We had a vertical asymptote at two. So we get something like that. Well, maybe make it look a little bit more vertical. And then we had another vertical asymptote at negative two. So we're gonna mention those right there. So we have, and it's good to label your graph here. X equals two was a vertical asymptote. X equals negative two was a vertical asymptote. There was a, the X axis itself was a horizontal asymptote, Y equals zero. And then we had X equals one was an X intercept. And then we also had that Y intercept of one fourth. So Y equals one fourth. And it turns out that with this information and knowing the multiplicities, we actually have all the information we need right here. So let, let's start with the y intercept right here, right? It has to go off towards basically the x intercept somehow or another. And just like uh, polynomial functions, there's a, there's a limit on how many times you can turn this thing around, right? And so we're going to draw this picture with minimal turns. We also want it to be continuous, except for when we, when we hit a hole in the domain. And it needs to be a smooth as well. No sharp corners, right? Those don't happen on rational functions. So basically what happens is we have to start approaching x equals 1. So we're going to have to come down towards x, uh, this x-intercept right here. And since it had odd multiplicity, that tells us we have to cross the x-axis. And as we cross it, we're going to come back down. We're going to have to go down. Now, as we get close to this vertical asymptote, we either have to go down towards infinity or we have to turn around and go off towards positive infinity. That's the only possibilities here. But wait a second. If we're going to go off towards positive infinity, that would mean we have to cross the x-axis again. But there's no other x-intercepts. The only x-intercept was at x equals 1. So because there's no x-intercept allowed there, we're going to have to continue on down towards x equals, or we're going to have to go up down towards negative infinity. And so here we had this crossing. We had a cross at the x-axis. But as we get close to the x or the vertical asymptote, again, we're going to cross infinity, which tells us we have to wrap around from the other side. All right? Um, and so that means we're going to have to cross infinity like so. Then we have to get closer and closer towards our horizontal asymptote, which we're going to have to approach it from above. How do I know we have to approach it from above? Well, if we didn't approach it from above, that's because we'd have to maybe, if we approached it from below, we'd have to do something like this. But wait a second. If we're approaching it from below, that means there had to be another x-intercept, which there isn't one, right? Um, and so then we put that information together. Since there's no other x-intercepts, we're going to have to approach uh, y equals zero from above. So that gives you the right-hand side of the graph. If we had symmetry, we could reflect to get the other side. We don't know that. But hey, when we're at the y-intercept, we're either going to have to approach infinity from, for our vertical asymptote or we have to approach negative infinity. Those are the only options when we get close to a, a vertical asymptote. But wait again, again, there's no x-intercept there, right? We can't cross down to go towards negative infinity. Therefore, the graph is going to have to go up towards positive infinity. And since the, since negative 2 had odd multiplicity, we're going to cross infinity, come up from the other side, so we get something like this. And then the same thing is, again, do we approach our horizontal asymptote from, above, from below, or do we approach it from above, right? Well, it can't be the second option, because again, that would require an x-intercept we don't have. And so this actually gives us the picture that is necessary here. And now compare the one I drew by hand versus the one the computer produced. And you can see that it's actually pretty good, right? We had our vertical asymptotes, which we found right here. We had our x-intercepts. And the behavior near the asymptotes, near the intercepts was correct. Um, using multiplicities, we can graph this entirely here. And that's typically how I'd like to graph these rational functions. Identify the intercepts, identify the asymptotes. 
and then using a test, like a starting point, like I usually like to use the y-intercept, using a starting point, you can then navigate through the intercepts and through the asymptotes using the multiplicities. Do I cross or do I touch at each of those locations? And so that's gonna conclude for us uh, lecture 31. In lecture 32, we're gonna do some more examples of this because this can get really complicated very quickly. Uh, and so we'll do some more examples of this in our next lecture. Stay tuned.